One of the most common misconceptions of charisma is that one size must fit all. The truth is that while there are some high level tips that everyone should follow, there are lots of different styles that you can adopt for success in charisma and in dating. So in honor of the release of Avengers Infinity War, we are going to look at six types of charismatic leading men and the pros and cons of each style. Then you can decide which style suits your personality best. A few caveats before we begin. One, yes, all of these guys are extremely handsome actors and absolutely women will be drawn to them because of their looks. Still, there is value to be had for the rest of us in analyzing their personalities because they really are some of the most charismatic people I've seen. Second, I am not saying that each actor is always the type shown in this video. It's more about the habits that I've frequently seen in their interviews. And three, these aren't the only types of attractive behavior. There's others, but I couldn't find MCU actors that represented them well, so we might get to them in other videos. Let's jump into it. First off, the guy that you know best in the MCU, Robert Downey Jr., the cool guy. When you meet a cool type, you will know it because you probably find yourself hoping that they like you. This occurs to both men and women, and part of that effect is generated from the self-assured body language, like in that last clip, but part of it comes because the cool type tends to jokingly elevate themselves like this. It's, we did a bang up job. Do you like, <laughs> do you like watching yourself as Iron Man on screen? Uh, yeah, more and more every time. You do? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool types also tend to be harder to make laugh, which creates a natural desire for others around them to work even harder to win their approval. Notice how in this next clip the whole audience chuckles, but Robert Downey Jr. stays collected. Without the You've R. never heard of Metro. No, I never. What are you supporting tonight, Jimmy? I don't know. I'd have to look in. Later on, we'll look. You'll go through my pants and we'll see what I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> cool types demonstrate their high status with their relative difficulty to captivate. You can see here that Robert is looking away from the camera, not rudely, but also communicating to the interviewer that she doesn't have 100% of his attention. These three points distinguish the cool type, and that's going to generate a lot of respect from the people around you that both men and women will notice and gravitate towards. Now, the downside is that people surrounding the cool guy often feel insecure of their status. Women may get the impression that you're just not into them and lose interest in you. That's why you might want to consider this next type of charisma, the giver, exemplified by Chris Evans. The giver differs from the cool type in that they tend to jokingly elevate not themselves, but other people. It looks like this. You feel like the godfather of these superhero movies? Whether he feels it or not, he is. <laughs> Whether, you know, he's going to say something really like, as long as humble, I'm not pretty, I'm cool. And simple, and be like, oh no, it would have happened anyway. This wouldn't have happened without Downey, and, and no, nobody doesn't know that. Givers also laugh easily at other people's jokes. There's no sense that you need to impress them, quite the opposite. You might get the impression that they really like you because of how enthusiastic they are in their laughter and in their praise different nuances to Thor, whether he's on Asgard or on Earth or really? whatever. You like you bring new aspects to him. And with, with Captain America, it's like as we've he seen doesn't him evolve. Bring you on <laughs> yes! That was perfect. Yeah. We decided that we've had a lot perfect. of Captain America love today, guys, so I'm glad to get some of this. <laughs> The giver type also tends to be very warm in the way that they touch. Chris Hemsworth is a great example. Whether he's cracking a joke, telling a story, or giving a compliment, he always finds a way to touch in a friendly way. Importantly, this occurs with both men and women. It's not a seduction trick. It's a way to express that warmth. We talk about the nuances of this kind of touch, including how to touch without being creepy, in our Chris Hemsworth video, linked to in the playlist in the description. All of these behaviors make women feel excellent around the giver, which is the essence of their charisma. But of course, there's more than one way to make women enjoy their time with you, and the goofball is a perfect example of an alternative. Dance off, bro! Me and you! Now, a lot of different Avengers cast members fall into this category, but I think none exemplify the goofball as well as Chris Pratt. The signature trait of the goofball is that they crack jokes in the moments when other people are literal and more serious. For instance, here's Chris's first question in his guest hosting appearance on Jimmy Kimmel. Thank you. I had a lot of fun with the monologue, but now let's get down to brass tacks, okay? Mm -hmm. Kangaroos did a donkey f a rabbit. <laughs> what up with it? And here he is answering the internet's most popular questions. Most people, when they get asked these questions, answer them literally so other people can learn more about their background. But Chris answered over half of his questions in a joking manner like this. Is Chris Pratt 
dead. <laughs> Only on the inside. Can Chris Pratt peel this off? French braid. <laughs> oh, oui. But I call it freedom braid. <laughs> How to contact Jennifer Lawrence agent? Well, I don't want to tell you that. Uh, Here's what you do. You pick up your phone, you dial 911, <laughs> and you say, say quickly, I need quickly, to talk to Jennifer Lawrence. I need Lawrence. to talk it's to Jennifer emergency. Lawrence. It's an emergency. And then whisper, there's someone in my house. The <laughs> agent will show up, you'll get to meet Jen and everything. You can adopt this strategy early in conversation with a woman that you like by jokingly answering questions like, where are you from and what do you do in order to tap into that goofball charisma. Now, the ability to be clever and quick on your feet may seem like a superpower and you might be wondering how Chris is able to turn on that sense of humor so instantaneously. But that's the secret of the goofball. They don't have to turn on the humor because it almost never gets turned off. They joke with friends, they joke with superiors, as well as people who work for them. Even when they're alone, they're joking and they're doing things that they find amusing. For instance, here's how Chris ate his snacks while training for Jurassic Park. What's up? It's your boy Chris Pratt coming back with an episode of What's My Snack? Last chapter, you ain't seen nothing. What's my snack? It's a carrot cake muffin. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Can I be honest with you? This is my snack for tomorrow. <laughs> So if you want to tap into the goofball charisma, start by doing things first that amuse you. The value is that the goofball makes women want to be around you because you're just so funny. And it's of course fun to be making jokes throughout your life. A drawback is that there is often a more seductive edge that is just missing from this goofball. And that's where this next type comes in and balances things out. He is the unashamed flirt, the suave guy. And Samantha, I'm so excited that you're here, and apparently you are also excited. I know I am. I want to thank you because I finally thank you for this tonight. <laughs> it's just it's so kind. Sebastian Stan is our MCU example of the suave guy, and he's comfortable with tension rising in interactions and still remaining cool. Watch how he slowly makes this joke and, of course, maintains an unrushed, calm demeanor while doing it. No, I've been, uh, no, I, I am geeking out a little bit because um, I've been, you know, I've been meaning to tell you this for a while, but I, I, probably about 15 years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I feel like I've seen you all my life. And here you are in person and you look so great. Now, many people tend to feel pressure when they're confessing to a crush. They get fidgety, they move their hands a lot, they speed up, and maybe their voice even cracks. But Sebastian is comfortable enough with the joke and the tension, so his voice doesn't flip to be more high-pitched at the end. Now, James Corden eventually is the one who has to cut the tension because it's just becoming too much for even him. You're a joke! You're ridiculous! You're a funny guy for it! You're actually going for it! I love it! I love it! This is exceptional! Obviously, Sebastian Stan isn't this forward in every interaction. I'm just using this as an example of the suave guy, but it's true of the suave guy as well, because honestly, doing this all the time would be creepy. What actually makes the suave guy attractive is that in addition to being flirtatious with women, he's also a conversational leader with everyone, introducing himself proactively to others, like in this next clip. We meet each other for a really long time. Hi. <laughs> as well as proactively including other people in different conversational threads like here. I always struggle with this thing, you know, it's kind of like a Sid and Nancy relationship basically. Right. <laughs> you know, I just like, they used to think I had a toupee when I was in high school. I know. <laughs> For some reason I look at you and I feel like you may relate to that, but maybe not. Well, no. If you're more interested in this overt sort of flirtation, I'm going to include a video with Craig Ferguson and Russell Brand in the playlist since those are two of the kings of flirtatious banter. I'm also going to throw in a video with James Bond for good measure in that playlist in the description. One of the drawbacks, though, is that this cool, calm, collected demeanor of the suave guy can be overshadowed by the next charismatic type, the attention grabber. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not talk about that. Let's not make it personal. The attention grabber, as exemplified by Anthony Mackie, is the person that you cannot miss in a group interaction because everything they do is big. Their voice is big. I can get your address and send you guys a pick puzzle. No! <laughs> Not a my, no, a housewarming gift. There's a whole conversation behind this, all right? <laughs> Their gestures are big. <laughs> Even their facial expressions are noticeable from a ways off. You must have been a real ladies' man in college. Uh, not no. trying to brag uh, in high school. <laughs> you know, uh, 
you know, not trying to brag. The attention grabber thrives in group settings because they are not afraid to speak up. Their loud voice and extreme conviction make them very hard to talk over. Whereas some of the other types might shrink in a crowd, the attention grabber is the person who you cannot forget. They are almost never bashful and have no problem approaching a group. They simply walk up, listen for a second, and wait for their chance to jump right in. Oh my God, Do you remember her? Sebastian Stan. <laughs> Man, you're looking good. I'm here for uh, Forrest Gump. Right? Man, I, the, this is the attention grabbers tend to think pretty highly of themselves. Otherwise, they wouldn't be sharing so much of themselves with everyone else. And while this does lead to the exclusion of quieter personalities sometimes, it is a sign of high self-esteem to assert yourself in a group setting, and that is attractive. So, if you can use this type of charisma in group conversations and then tone it back a bit for one-on-one -on -one interactions, you're likely to have the best chance of first being noticed by and then connecting with whoever it is that you like. Check out our video on Will and Jaden Smith below in the playlist to see how you can use this type of personality effectively in a crowded group conversation. Last but not least, though, we have the new guy, Tom Holland, who is the storyteller. Where is this, here in America? In London. In London. And I was kind of planning to move out here to L.A., but now I'm only just moving five minutes away from my mom. Oh. Um, <laughs> One of the key pieces when it comes to the storyteller type is that they realize that a well-told story is almost always more interesting than a simple direct answer. So even when asked questions that could be answered in single sentences, they dive into a story completely unprompted. What would you wish for for your birthday? Well, I have just got, gone through the stressful process of buying my first apartment, which I'm over the moon with. Um, the funny story is, is that I've been looking for an apartment nearly for two years, and my mum rang me up while I was shooting. But just telling more stories isn't always a good thing. I'm sure that you know someone who drones on and on about the most boring stuff and it just drives you nuts. So Tom Holland livens up his stories by saying the dialogue in present tense. Sometimes it's just a simple aside where he plays a character like this. I go up to him, I shake his hand, nice to meet you, and I'm starting to panic, right? I'm like, oh my god, this is what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> and Other times, the dialogue creates a bit of mystery as to what will happen next, and that helps to captivate the listener. Funny experience, I was sat at the back of a classroom next to quite a pretty girl, and uh, eventually she's like, so dude, what's your deal, man? <laughs> I was like, well, do you wanna know my secret? <laughs> she's like, okay, but I match the Spider-Man. <laughs> Dude, you're nuts, bro. You're nuts. That mystery piece is critical to good storytelling, and that's why a good storyteller will raise questions in the mind of the audience. They're going to open some kind of sense of anticipation where you can sort of guess the ending of the story, but you'll want to see how it plays out. And that's how they're going to keep you captivated. Notice how that specific anticipation builds up in this next clip. And I was in the Spider-Man suit, and it was at the very beginning of shooting. And I was in a harness, and I had to stick to the ceiling, and... I didn't go to the bathroom for like 11 hours or something because we didn't really figure out how to take the suit off quickly at that point. We didn't understand how it worked. Um, and I was in a harness and, and obviously it's hot so I'm drinking water all the time because I'm doing exercise and running around. Now you want to know if he pees himself, right? That is what a good storyteller does. They raise questions and then dramatize the answers. Now, I think that storytelling is one of the most underrated charisma skills. I think it's one of the most attractive skills that a guy can have. So I am including a clip in the playlist below from a master, Kevin Hart, because he also shows you how to get attention before you start telling your stories so that you know people are listening. An orangutan <laughs> comes an orangutan out on a four-wheeler, hey, listen to me, listen to me. Video. That don't look like Dubai, that looks like... Video. No, that's just that their, like that's the, listen, that's the orangutan. Obviously, there is more to each of these actors, and of course, to each type than I've touched on in this video, but I thought it'd be fun to do a brief overview. Now, you can certainly mix and match, but you're gonna have to form habits, and you're not gonna be able to do all of these types all of the time, so choose carefully which habits you do based on how you would like to be, and of course, how you'd like to be perceived. For me, I think that the giver type is one of the most important to incorporate. And the downside is that it can be very easy to fall into the nice guy mode where you become someone that guys and girls walk over without thinking twice since you're just so darn nice. In order to be a nice guy without becoming a pushover, I recommend No More Mr. Nice Guy, which you can check out today for free when you start your free 30-day trial of Audible at audible.com slash charisma. Audible is our sponsor for this video and they are awesome for helping you to become a better version of yourself. In this case, when it comes to understanding the nuances of action 
actually being an attractive and a kind guy. Audible is great for listening when you commute, and you can switch seamlessly between all of your devices without losing a beat. As a member of Audible, you get one free book credit every single month, and your books are yours forever, even if you wind up canceling your membership. So check out No More Mr. Nice Guy today with your free 30-day trial of Audible at audible.com slash charisma, or you can text charisma to 500 hyphen 500. That's C-H-A-R-I-S-M-A to 500 500. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in going deeper into any of the topics, I really just covered them very briefly. Click that link on the playlist in the description. Some of our best videos are in there, and we've gone deep into each of the types that I mentioned, so I highly recommend checking that out. If you're interested, you can also subscribe, but of course, you know, make up your own mind, free will and all that kind of stuff. If you want to comment, do that as well. I will be in there for the first hour after posting. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.